The Dear Sweet Presley hat is a free crochet hat pattern by Lacey McKinnon of CrochetLibra.com. You can find the link to her website below to get your hands on the free PDF download and follow along with this video tutorial. This free crochet hat pattern is written for adults, but I will show you how to modify it to fit babies and kids as well. Worked from the top down, this hat pattern uses a combination of double crochet and chains in the body to create a delicate lacy section. There are two brim options available, so you can choose the perfect style to meet your needs. I want to thank Lacey for reaching out and asking me to film this tutorial for her hat pattern. You see, this isn't just a hat. At the beginning of the year, Lacey lost her baby niece at just two days old. In honor of Presley, Lacey designed the Dear Sweet Presley hat in October, which is Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. Designing this hat is Lacey's way of shouting, Presley was here, and she was special and beautiful and perfect, and she deserves to be known. In Lacey's words, I want everyone to know that Presley is a whole person and that losing her was a real loss and that her life is valuable. So in honor of Presley, here is the Dear Sweet Presley hat tutorial. If you make one of these hats, please tag me on social media so I can see it using at Mandobug and tag Lacey, who's at Lacey Darlin, or you can email her a picture as well to crochetlibra at yahoo.com. If you share the photos on social, also use the hashtag Dear Sweet Presley hat. For this pattern, you'll need 30 to 100 grams of a light DK or heavy sport weight yarn. I'm using Lilith Rose Fibers on her Alpaca Sport base, and this is the custom colorway that Lacey had her dye up specifically for this hat. You can make a custom order for this color at her website. I'll have it linked down below. You'll also need a 4.5 millimeter US 7 crochet hook. I used a 4.0. You'll need a tape measure and a tapestry needle. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to do both of the brim options. I made a shorter hat here using brim one and a little bit longer hat using brim option two. So I will be going over both brim styles in this video. It will be linked down below if you want to skip to one or the other when we get to that point. To begin, we're going to start with a magic ring or any adjustable ring that you like to start with. I'll show you my favorite starting ring. You pull up a loop and you pinch a loop here in that thumb and middle finger. You yarn over and pull through loosely. We keep it very loose because that's what you're going to work into. Chain one so that it doesn't come undone. And when you untwist it, you're left with this adjustable ring that you can work into. So we're going to put 12 double crochet in this ring that we started with. So yarn over, insert your hook into the ring, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. And that's going to be one double crochet. We're going to place 12. Once you have your 12 double crochet in your ring, you can pull it close. And then you're going to slip stitch to your first double crochet to join. So insert it into that first double crochet, yarn over and pull through everything on the hook and then chain one. And this pattern notes that the chain one at the beginning of the round does not count as a stitch. So for round two, we're going to place two double crochet in the same stitch in each stitch around. So we just joined into this one. So we're now going to place two double crochets in there. So two double crochet in the first stitch, two in the next, And you're going to repeat that around. Once you've worked two double crochet in each stitch around, you should now have 24 double crochet and you're going to slip stitch to the first double crochet to join and then chain one. So for round three, we're going to do a double crochet in the same stitch 
and then two double crochet in the next one. And we're going to repeat that around. So this first stitch here, just one double crochet. And then in the next stitch, we're going to work two double crochet. So one in the next, and then two in the next. And you repeat that around. So we're going to be increasing 12 stitches again for the entire round. When you get to the end of the round, you're going to slip stitch to the first stitch to join. And chain one. And then you're ready to start round four. So now we're going to do two double crochet and then two double crochet in the next stitch. So for the first one, we're going to double crochet just one stitch into that double crochet, one stitch in the next, and then two in the next. So you can see how we keep increasing out in these rounds. There's going to be one extra plain stitch in between our increases from here on out. So this round we're at one double crochet two double crochet, and then a double crochet increase, which is two in the next. One double crochet, one double crochet, and then two in the next. This will increase us another 12 stitches for this round. Once you get to the end of the round, you're going to slip stitch to join. and chain one, and we're ready to start round five. So now we're going to do three individual double crochets and then two in the next. So one, two, three, and then two double crochets in the next for our increase. And this will increase us another 12 stitches around. So one, two, three, increase, two double crochets in the next stitch. When you get to the round, slip stitch join as usual, and chain one. Now here's a good point to stop and check your progress to decide when to stop for your sizing. I'm going to be making the 3 to 10 child size, so I want to continue doing the increase rows until my crown width is 5.5 to 6 inches, and you can find those measurements on the sizing chart that she's provided in the pattern. So let's go ahead and see where we're at after round 5. We're looking just shy of four and a half inches there. So this would be a great stopping point for the zero to six month size. You would have wanted to stop a little sooner for a newborn size. We're gonna need to go a few more rounds. Um, so let's move on to the next round. We're gonna continue increasing in the same fashion. So we just did three double crochets and then an increase. So for this next round, we're gonna do four and increase. And then the next round is gonna be five and increase until you've reached your full width. So I'm gonna go ahead and crochet that up and then meet you at that point. So I've reached the stopping point for the child size, which we were looking to hit between five and a half to six inches for crown width, and we're right in between the two. So this for me at my gauge ended up being after round seven. So I finished round seven, which was double crochet in the next five stitches and then two double crochets in the next. If you're making a larger size, you're gonna wanna continue on with round eight, nine, and so on of the pattern to get to your full crown width before jumping to round 11. So once you do hit your crown width, we're gonna jump to round 11, which is just one double crochet in each stitch around. We're not increasing, we're just working a plain row here. So double crochet in the same stitch as you slip stitched into, and then one in each stitch around. So 
So once you get to the end of the round, you're going to slip stitch to join. And chain one. So now this is for round 12. Now I should note that because I'm making a smaller size than the adult size that this is written for, I'm not actually on round 12. I'm just following round 12 at this point. So to start the next round, you're going to double crochet, chain one, double crochet in the first stitch. So in that same stitch we slip stitched into, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And that's going to give us this V stitch. So it's like this. Now you're going to skip two stitches and you're going to repeat this V stitch in the next stitch. And you're going to do that around. So skip the next two and double crochet chain one. And then double crochet in that same stitch. So you'll get these spaced out V stitches. So we skip two and then double crochet, chain one, double crochet in the same stitch. Skip two, double crochet, chain one, double crochet in the same stitch. And you repeat that around. When you get to the end of the round, you should be ending with a skip two. You're going to slip stitch into that first stitch of the round and you're ready to start round 13. Now round 13 and 14 are the same. So we're going to put a double crochet, chain double crochet in the chain space of the V stitch of the previous round. So that's right in the middle there where that chain one space is. So we're going to go in the chain one space and place a double crochet chain one, double crochet, and then right into the next V stitch, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And we're going to repeat that across. Or around. When you get to the end of the round, you're going to slip stitch to that first double crochet to join, chain one, and now we're going to repeat that same row again. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet in each V stitch around, and that's going to be for round 14. Once you get to the end of the round, you're going to slip stitch to the first double crochet to join and chain one. And then for the next round, you're going to double crochet in each double crochet and chain space around. So double crochet in the same stitch as your slip stitch, then in the chain one space, then in the next double crochet, then in the next double crochet and then in the next chain space. So it should be two double crochet and chain one space, two double crochet, chain one space that we're working into all the way around ending with a double crochet in the last double crochet, which again is each, a double crochet in each stitch around. When you get to the end of the round, you're going to slip stitch to the first double crochet to join and you're ready for the next round. So we're going to chain one and for this round, we're putting a double crochet in each double crochet around and we're actually doing that for this round and the next round. So it's just a double crochet in each stitch around. Something to be aware of at this point in the hat depending on what size you're making, you need to see how many rows you want to work 
and how many how much how much space you want to leave for your brim because there are two brim options for this hat so let's go ahead and take a moment to pause and look at how far along we are in the hat so I'm making the child three to ten child size which is a recommended hat height of six and three quarters to seven and a half inches so right now with the beginning of this round from the crown I'm looking at about five inches at the end of this round now if I work just this round and start the brim that would leave me about two and a half inches of a brim or I can continue in pattern and have an inch or an inch and a half left of the brim. So I just want you to be aware that you might want to start measuring how long your hat is getting, have an idea of how long you want your brim to be and stop before you get to the brim. So I just completed doing two more rounds of double crochet in each stitch around. And I think this hat is ready for the brim. I'm making the three to 10 child size, which is recommended to go six and three quarters to seven and a half inches. So let's say if I did decide to go the full seven and a half inches, if I place seven and a half on the tape measure at the crown here, it's gonna show you the difference between the end of the hat now and where the end of the ribbing would be when you're done. So if you want less ribbing, you could continue in pattern or you could make your hat just a little bit shorter and not do the full hat height that's recommended since there is a range for the hat height. I think this is a good spot for me because I don't mind. I think I'm going to be closer to the seven inch mark, which is going to leave us about an inch and a half of ribbing, which I think is perfect. And also the entire pattern repeat is repeating these three rounds and then these three rounds. So, I think I'd want to do another full three rounds before starting the brim to keep the hat in pattern and I just don't want to do that. So I'm going to start the brim here, but those are some tips for you deciding when to start your brim. Now there are two brim options for this hat. I'm going to demonstrate both of them for you. So the first brim option is the front post back post option. If you're interested in that option, I'm going to go over that now. Otherwise, the other option is the single crochet ribbing as you go. If you're interested in that option, you can skip ahead. There should be timestamps below in the description of the video. So for the front post back post option, there are a couple setup rounds that we have to do. So we're going to slip stitch to join like we've been doing and chain one. And so for this first round, we're going to single crochet in each stitch around. So you yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. And we're going to do that one in each stitch around. Once you've single crocheted in each stitch around, you slip stitch to join and chain one. And now you're going to double crochet in each stitch around. So one double crochet in each single crochet around. Once you get to the end of your round, you're going to slip stitch to join and chain one like we've been doing. And now we're ready to start the front post and back post double crochets. So we're going to be working around the post of this first double crochet here. The front post, you work from the front you enter around the stitch from the front, from right to left. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So there's your front post double crochet. You can see it raises your double crochet above the other stitches. Now for the back post double crochet, we're gonna be working in the same spots, but from the back. So from the back, right to left, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two. And you can see it is the reverse effect. It creates the double crochet popping out on the other side. And so you're gonna alternate those two stitches around. So we want the next double crochet to be a front post. So we come in from the front, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. And the next is a back, so we come in through the back. front, back. And 
and then you're going to repeat that around. Once you make your way around, you should have just finished with a back post double crochet, and you can slip stitch to join, chain one, and then we're going to repeat that round around for most of the length of our brim. So yarn over, front post double crochet, and it's going to feel a little different because you're going to feel on the back your back posts. Um, so it should be a little ac actually easier to get in around that post because it's kind of already sticking up on its own. And same for the back. Sometimes you can just tilt to the back. It's easier to get around it that way. See how the hook is? Get your back post and then front post. and then back post. So we're going to do front post double crochet, back post double crochet, around. And the reason we don't want to do the full length of the brim is there are two more rows, or rounds, I should say. There are two more rounds that we do when we're done with the front post, back post double crochets. So I'm going to do, let's see, so going for my recommended length for the size I'm making of seven inches, I am going to do this next row of front post, back post around, and then I'm gonna stop and move on to the final two rounds of the brim here. And after you've done your desired number of front post, back post, double crochet rows, which for, for me, I did two. For you, you might wanna do three, four, or more, especially if you want a rolled brim, which with this front post, back post, double crochet, it's kind of thick. I don't know if you'd need a rolled brim, but if you want something extra thick and warm, you can keep going and fold it up. But when you're ready to work your final two rounds, the, the first one of those two is a single crochet around. So I already chained one and I put a single crochet in that first front post, double crochet, single crochet in the back post, double crochet, and single crochet in each stitch around. Once you've worked a single crochet in each stitch around, you can slip stitch to join. And chain one. And now for the final round of this brim, we're gonna put a waistcoat stitch in the first stitch and each stitch around. So what that means is instead of working into the top two loops, we're going to be working into the center of our single crochet. We're going to and working a single crochet into the center of that single crochet. So instead of placing our hook here, we go in between these two vertical lines and shove it through the back. And depending on how tight you've been crocheting, that might be a little difficult. Yarn over, let's see, I missed it. So that's where we don't want to go. So when you go in between the two vertical bars, when you look at the back, you need to catch the rest of the single crochet. So if you just go, even if you put your hook between them, if you slip back here, that's not the right spot. You need to go between them, and then on the back side, you need to also get through that loop here. When you yarn over and pull up, you'll see your stitch is coming from in between the two vertical bars and not the two top loops. So I'll show that again. So here's our next single crochet. We go in between, but we check on the back that we're still catching that loop right there. There it is. And you end up pulling up a stitch right in between. So I'll show you again. In between the two in the front and in the back, right? Our hook wants to go here, but that's not the right spot. It needs to grab that bar.
And so then you complete that all the way around the brim. Once you've done a waistcoat stitch into each stitch around and you've made it back to the beginning of your round, you can do an invisible join by stopping here, leaving yourself a tail, pulling the loop through, so thread your end with a tapestry needle or a darning needle. I like the kind with the bent tip. And what you're going to do is you're going to find the first stitch of that round and you're going to go through it as if you're going to work into it. And then once you pull it a little snug, you'll see that the last stitch you just completed of the round and you're going to go through the center of that stitch and out the back. And when you pull that tight, it looks just like the stitches next to it. And then you can go ahead and weave in your ends like you normally would. When I weave in my ends, I like to go back and forth on the inside of the hat through various stitches. Anywhere that it looks like it's going to hide my yarn. And you can always check through the front of your work to see if you can see that needle. You'll be able to see the thread, but you can't. And I think it's really nice to weave in through these front and back posts because they're pretty thick. And since that's on the inside of the hat, you won't see it. It's nice to actually weave, go up and down, back and forth. Every time you turn, you're really anchoring that end in place, making it less likely for it to work its way out after hopefully years and years of wear. Once you've secured your tail, you can trim it and then do the same thing for the inside, the tail inside your hat, the one that you started with. When I weave in this tail, why don't I just go ahead and show you what I do, because I do have a method I like to use. Because you start with an adjustable ring, I like to pull it nice and tight. See which direction we're coming from. When I pull back, do you see how it pulls on those stitches, whereas if I go forward, it brings them together? That's the direction we're going to want to go. And I split those first that first round of double crochet, I split I split the stitch, so we can't really see the needle here, and if we flip it over, we can't see the needle there either. And I sew several circles around that beginning hole to keep it nice and snug. So I just split those stitches around and around and around. The key here is not to pull too tightly, tightly enough that it's snug, but not so tightly that it distorts the fabric. You don't want to see that you've woven any threads in, but you also don't want them coming undone. And then you can snip that end. So that is the Dear Sweet Presley hat brim option one in the child size. If you want to do the second brim option, that is single crochet ribbing as you go. So what you're going to do is you're going to slip stitch to join at the end of your body round. And now you're going to chain the length that you want your brim to be. So this is great because you can, for the most part, eyeball it and for sure see how tall your hat is going to be. So for this size, this child size hat, I think I'm going to go maybe two more for a little bit longer brim than I did for brim option one. 
So I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten chains total. And now for the brim row one, we're going to be skipping the chain closest to the hook and working one single crochet in each chain back up towards the hat. So skipping that chain closest to the hook, we're going into that chain here, working a single crochet. I snagged. Trying not to split your stitches. Really split it. Okay. Right there. Okay, so we single crocheted in each chain all the way back to the brim here, and now we're going to slip stitch into the next two stitches of the round we're applying the brim to. So that would be this first stitch of the round here. So we're just slip stitching and the second one. And we're ready to turn and work row two. So we're gonna chain one, turn, and we're going to work brim row two. So we're going to skip the two slip stitches that we just did, which are kind of on the back here, those two. And we're going to be working single crochet in the back loop only of each single crochet across. So skipping those two slip stitches, we're going to be working here. And this should be nine single crochet now, uh, or whatever number that you chained minus one because we skipped that first chain, remember? So for me, it's nine. So two. And that is nine. So you'll want to keep track of that number. That's going to help you stay on track and not accidentally mess up your stitches as you work your brim, because it will shorten it if you, or lengthen it if you happen to change the number here. So now we're ready to work brim row three. So we chain one and turn, and we're gonna work a single crochet in the back loop of each single crochet of our brim here. So again, for me, that was nine. For you, it may be a different number. And that will bring us back to the brim and we're going to slip stitch into the next two stitches of the brim. So you'll see there's yarn already in these two stitches. So we want to go in these next two. Slip stitch, slip stitch. And so that's basically what you repeat all around the hat are brims, brim rows two and three. So we're going to turn, skip those first two slip stitches. I can, hope you can see that okay, which is that one and that one. And we're going to work a single crochet in the back loop of the previous row all the way down. Sometimes the end stitches can be a little tight to get through depending on how tightly you chain when you turn. So the next row is chain one turn, single crochet in the back loop, all the way across, back up to the brim. And when you get to the brim, you slip stitch in the next two stitches of the brim, which do you see that slip stitch in that space? Make sure you're not working into stitches that have already been worked into. So we're not going into this one. We're going into these next two. And turn. So those are the two rows that you're gonna repeat all the way around the brim. This is what your brim should be looking like if you're doing it correctly. 
I will meet you at the end to show you how to close that up. When you get to the end of the brim that you're applying this ribbing to, you should have that final row to do where you slip stitch into the last two stitches. Turn, skip your two slip stitches and single crochet in the back loop of each stitch of the brim. chain one and turn and now it's time to close up the brim by slip stitching your two edges together so you'll skip the chain that you just created and you can slip stitch the whole stitch with the beginning chain on the beginning chain you'll only have one loop to work into on the last single crochet row that you did you'll have two so you could choose to go through both loops here and just the one on the other side or you could just go through the back loop only is also another option so I'm going to go ahead and go through both loops on the row we just completed um, since the pattern doesn't specify uh, I'm assuming that it means both And you're just slip stitching the two ends together by going through the corresponding stitch on each side. And I split that stitch. Whoops. So now when you get to the end, the pattern calls for a chain one, cut your tail. I'm leaving it a little long so I have a good length to weave in. I'm going to pull that tail out and you can see there is our slip stitch row where we slip stitched the beginning row and the last row together. And then you just weave in that end. So how I'm going to do that is I want this last chain one that we did to line up. So I'm going to place it the very first weaving in part directly above so that it pulls down that stitch in the direction I want it to go. Then I'm going to go up the inside of the hat for weaving in my end to try to conceal it a little bit better. And for this one, I really want to weave it back and forth. So I'm going to go back and forth here. To make a nice and concealed tail, especially if you're using this alpaca sport yarn is a little slippery. Uh, you really want to be careful to weave a length long enough that it doesn't want to come undone and then also make sure you're not pulling it you want to pull it snug but not tightly enough to distort those stitches and with slippery yarns especially like this one once i weave back and forth a ways i like to go back again and since this all this is on the inside of the hat if it does if this does create a little bit of a textured spot you won't see it
And then when I'm ready to snip my end, I try to split some stitches, like split the threads of the stitches, because that really helps to snug that yarn in. I stretch it and pull it a little bit, then I snip it. And that is brim option number two. If you make one of these hats, please tag me on social media so I can see it using at Mandobug and tag Lacey, who's at Lacey Darlin, or you can email her a picture as well to crochetlibra at yahoo.com. If you share the photos on social, also use the hashtag Dear Sweet Presley Hat. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, guys, happy crafting. Bye.